In this video, we're going to try and take a look at the contents of the flashcard inside of this cube unit. To get to the flashcard, we'll need to take the device apart. I've already made a video on doing this. It's sort of an involved process, but it's not terribly complicated. The flashcard in this device is located on the other side of the main board behind the screen. Once you have all the screws removed, pull the board straight out and remove the fan connector and swing it off to the side. The flash card is held into the board with a single screw and a socket. Once you've unscrewed the screw, it should come directly off of the main board. There are three chips on this device. The chip shown here is a USB controller. And on the other side, there are two flash chips. After searching for the information on the sticker, it returns a part listing from Mauser, which shows that this device was sold as a single unit. And that according to the listing here, it is a two gigabyte flash card. But the pinout for this device is not compatible with a normal computer. You can't just plug this into a USB port. So instead we can take a look at the data sheet. After scrolling through the data sheet a little bit, we can see it gives a pinout for this particular device. Fortunately, this flash card uses exactly the same pinout as normal flash cards. The only difference being is that the connector is different. Using this information, we can take the pinout of this device and convert it into a normal USB port. For this, I cut the cable off of an old USB device and soldered it onto this perf board, while also using these male header pins. After double and then triple checking the pinout to make sure there is no wiring problem here, I plugged it into my computer. And luckily, the drive popped up in the system as just a normal USB drive. But rather than going through the drive in the file system, I decided to make a bit-for-bit -bit copy of the entire image of the drive file using the Unix utility DD. Doing this step allows you to take more aggressive actions on the drive image without affecting any of the contents of the actual drive. After creating the disk image, I ran the utilities file, fdisk, and fatcat to find out more information about the drive. Based on the information from fatcat, we can see that this is a fat16 file system. From there, I used fatcat to find and try and extract all the files it could find in the file system. There is a folder structure present, but it turns out that all the files that were on this drive have been deleted. From there, I used fatcat's file recovery mode to try and recover all the files that it could from the file system. What it was able to recover was an XML file and a handful of binary data files. From here, I used a hex editor to examine one of the files, and you're able to see some information in here in terms of the string data. From the data that is shown, this looks like a log file for an alarm. But what is sort of interesting is that the data farther down takes on a sort of almost wavy appearance. This can often mean that this is a digitally encoded analog waveform. So to get a better view of it, I open this raw file up in Audacity. Audacity gives you the ability to open up raw data and interpret it as an audio file. The tricky part with doing this though is trying to match the encoding settings to something that is actually interpretable. This can take several attempts, but eventually I was able to get some settings that did work. And after zooming in and scrolling around a bit, we can see that there is an analog waveform of what looks to be a QRS complex. 